Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go to work, cause my boss is a jerk, and I'm not even that paid. I need a change in my life, cause I don't feel alive, and there's nothing that makes me happy. Oh. Hold my beer for a minute I'm about to quit my job, cash in for a ticket I'm going on a trip and I don't plan to visit I'm gonna stay there till I feel like I'm winning all And this is just the beginning I need a big change, help me feel like living I need a big swing, home runs I'm hitting And I'll never look back, moving on till I get it all And we all got dreams We all want things But what you gonna do for hi guys welcome back to our channel in case you're new here my name is maren and i'm maureen yeah so guys in today's episode we want to bring to your attention a certain trend that we we have realized has been gaining traction all right and we've been seeing not only on social media but also you know like in real life arab women are leaving their racist cultures and they're beginning to choose black black men and other races right and they are terming their racist culture as haram mm -hmm. you know because of how they are racist towards black people of course yeah. but let's not talk too much let's watch this video and then you come back and talk about it remember to subscribe if you have not subscribed to our channel and you can also leave us a comment on what you think about this episode let's watch and then you come back and talk about it because Allah blessed me alhamdulillah my mom actually set me up with a lot of Arab men and we had conversations with so many different guys. They just always fell flat. They didn't meet the standards that I was looking for. And it made me realize what I didn't want in a man. It is Wild Wednesday and I'm going to get wild and offensive with my videos because I think it's time somebody digs deep into our culture and into our people to figure out what is going on upstairs with our women. Divorce is on the rise more than ever among Middle Easterns, whether they live in the Middle East or abroad. And just like we saw among westernized countries like America, when the women became independent is when the family structures collapsed. They they collapsed to the point where now women are waking up and saying, you know what? I want a home again. I want my kids to have a healthy home. Well, the Middle Easterns are not there. We are at the point where we are collapsing because not only are women independent asking for a divorce, but we also have culture shock. A lot of our women are extremely spoiled. Yes, I said it. A lot of our women are extremely spoiled and the men cannot keep up. What is happening with our women? We went from a point where Arab men used to tell each other, marry her young so you can raise her your way which is not right either come to find out you cannot raise the women because we get to a point where we know what we want and did you guys know that 70 percent of divorces are initiated by women and of those women 90 percent of them are college educated are they sick of the abuse and they want out because they know they can support themselves or do they no longer want to make the sacrifice for their marriage let's talk about it a lot of arab and brown muslim women always reach out to me and ask me how do i tell my parents about the black man that I'm interested in. There's a lot of Muslim women out there that are Arab and brown and they don't know how to come and talk to their parents about the man that they're interested in simply because he's black. Simply because their parents have iterated to them again and again and again no black men no black men they'll even be like if they're arab they'll be like okay any other arab country is fine and if they're daisy they'll be like okay any other daisy kind of is fine but like what like what how how are they even determining the value of a man by his skin color that's not islam they you can go anywhere and you can talk to anyone and you can open up the quran for yourself there is nowhere that says you need to obey your parents if they are straight out doing something that is un-islamic and preventing you from marrying a muslim man just because of his skin color is un-islamic so shut that down respectfully say no and you know do your thing and so from that experience, I created my list. I went, I sat down, I set a timer. I wrote down everything I wanted in a man. And I set a three minute timer. And a friend of mine had recommended me to do this. And I did this with three other friends. And look, now I have a beautiful daughter, a beautiful husband. I'm so grateful to Allah for the blessings in my life. I'm grateful that I made a plan for what I wanted. And it was easy to see that. So when I met my husband, he was everything on that list. It was a no-brainer. I knew that I liked him. I knew that I wanted him to be my husband. And I took the first steps. I was the one who was interested. And I told him, I'm interested in marriage. I'm interested in getting to know you. And that's, where it, that's what it led to. So your, to answer your question, why did I choose a black man over an Arab man to marry? I didn't 
Allah chose it for me and it's the best blessing ever, alhamdulillah. A lot of people say, I want to marry from my home country or my home village or my hometown. Some people marry their own cousins and it's like, go far. Get out there, make a list of what you want, characteristics. Don't make it about skin color or country of origin or language. Allah will bless you, not only with a good spouse, but an amazing family. I have amazing in-laws, I have an amazing child, and I thank Allah every day for that blessing. This is how you get a beautiful wife. It's quite simple. When you see a girl that's pretty, you walk up to them and you say hi. That's it. Don't overthink it. I'll show you. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I love your earrings. Moral of the story is don't make it a big deal. Most people want to get to know you. And hey, the girl that you think you like might just like you back. And um, let me add one thing. As women, we like witty men. And when you're present and you're confident and you're having a conversation with us, the conversation will be good enough for us to be interested in you. So, yeah. A lot of Muslim parents will say no to their daughters marrying a black man. And that's haram. It's straight out haram. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ خُلُقَهُ وَدِينَهُ فَزَوِّجُوا He said that if someone comes to you and you're okay with his deen, meaning his Islam, and his character, then marry him. He didn't say his tribe. He didn't say his skin color. He didn't say what race he is, what language he speaks. So many parents will use all of these excuses to stop their daughters from marrying black men, all because they have biases against black men. Because they think wrongly and in a haram way about black men. Did you know that Prophet Adam السلام, was black? Did you know that Prophet Musa السلام, was black? The color of your skin doesn't matter. In our deen, we have Arabized and whitewashed our history to make it seem that there are no black Muslims. But if a man comes to you and he's Muslim and he's black, you have no reason to say no, except that you're not happy with his Islam or his akhlaq, his character. Other than that, any other reason is haram. And if your parents are standing in your way and telling you you can't marry someone because of their skin color, you can disobey them. You absolutely can because what they're doing is haram and we have been instructed to be kind to them, to be respectful of our parents. But when they ask us to do something haram, we stand up and we say no. Welcome back guys. What do you think about this episode? Personally, I feel like the world is changing and right mm. now there's a lot of um should we say migration that is happening that is forcing that cultural exchange to happen you know so it's why i feel like you find if someone from an arab community their parents might have been thinking about that pure blood and not mixing of cultures it's why they oppress them so much into still marrying their cousins and people from their own community but you know you cannot stop the the cultural exchange that is currently happening happening across the world because of that heavy migration that is happening yeah but you know this an interesting point that uh one woman the one the other woman said in this clip mm -hmm. she said that most of her women are very very spoiled mm -hmm. and they're leaving their men because well some of the men control them and in their own terms they marry the women young so that they can bring them up to their liking mm -hmm. but also uh, I feel like it's you know when they in the in, in America when they say that uh, white women like marrying black men mm -hmm. because black men put them on a pedestal mm -hmm. while white women they, 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 I mean white men they're forced to be submissive to white men mm -hmm. so with black men they can um, exert some sort of power. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's kind of the same with the Arab, not all of them, some Arabic women who are marrying black men. It's because they, well, they're tired of being submissive to their chauvinistic, not culture. in a bad way, chauvinistic, oppressive culture. oppressive culture. And they find that marrying outside of their race, not necessarily only black men, mm -hmm. but outside of their race, they're able to have a bit more muscle to move around. I don't know, that's my opinion. Yeah, how I it see. does make sense. There's also another thing mm -hmm. that the first lady mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, there's this lady who talked about mm -hmm. her mother tried fixing her with the um, people from her own community, mm -hmm. Arabic men. Mm -hmm. And she says, I feel like at the, at the bottom line, a woman knows what they want, mm. a man knows what he wants, right? right? And because this lady was saying she had a list of things, right? Mm. A list of things she wanted in a partner. And mm -hmm. she says, 
her mom used to fix dates for her to go out with the Arab men mm -hmm. and she says this Arab men she didn't find what she was looking for in all the Arab men she dated mm -hmm. but she says there's that black man she didn't know she was going to date or marry a black man but she says she went out on a date with a black man and, and that he man checked all he boxes. checked all like you guys me uh, okay to be honest I'm wishing to find a man that can check all my boxes <laughs> you know because right. she says this guy checked all her boxes and when I look at them to be honest genuinely they look happy and they look like they, they have a nice happy marriage. marriage they look like they respect each other at least that is what we see on social media mm -hmm. because you, can, you also have to remember that outside of social media people lead very different lives right from what they show you and they only show you what they choose to show you right so this woman says the black man checked all her boxes and why it's why she decided to continue dating and marry. Mm -hmm. she eventually got, got married to him mm. yeah yeah so i don't know guys you let me know what you think about this at the end of the day i feel like bottom line if you meet a man that's gonna check all your boxes right? or at People least know meets, what they mo want. meets most of your requirements mm. yeah although you know it's it's, it's, a, it's, it's a tricky, tricky. situation it's mm. a tricky situation i myself not long ago used to think that i could marry outside of uh, the black community mm -hmm. i used to think because you know love is love is blind and you love who you love it's what but they say it's what they said but right now a lot of things are coming up uh, coming to light, coming to light mm -hmm. that you feel like you're comfortable just um dating within, uh, your, within race. your race mm -hmm. whether, yeah whether whether it's a uh, african whether it's a jamaican whether it's a black american yeah at this point i'm just uh, 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 that's my personal feelings mm -hmm. i'm feeling like um because of doing reaction videos and and i think so many things that i feel like i didn't have that information mm. right now this way a long time ago i would say for me i would want to date outside my race right, but right now just know the experience right about. but with the things that i have uncovered with everything that uh, having all the information i have right now mm. i'm like i'm happy to date within my race it doesn't necessarily have to be a black i mean african right yeah but you guys let us know what you think about this because i also remember there was a time where mm -hmm. uh, this was such a crime arabic girls you know they it felt like they were deviating from their culture this was such a huge crime a long that time they, ago yeah they literally lose their lives for marrying black men exactly yeah so i'm guessing times have changed and i'm happy for that nobody has to lose a life because they choose who they choose mm. yeah yeah so guys let us know what you think about this episode we really appreciate that you are able to join us on this one and let's see you on our next consider subscribing if you have not and we'll see you on our next episode.